Hey everyone, my name is Tommy Reynolds and welcome to the Virtual Photography Show. This is a talk that I should have been giving back in March, but instead I'm doing it here in my small home studio here in the southeast in Kent. This one's all about personal projects. This is something that I'm deeply passionate about and I want to talk to you today about finding your own style, designing your life around doing what you love. I think this is one of the biggest question marks that a lot of us have, or certainly we've thought of it at some point in our life where we want to figure out what our style is. And it can be so easy to get caught up inside your own head or get caught up posting the same sort of thing over and over again, just because it looks consistent on your Instagram feed, for example. You're afraid to try something new. Maybe you're a professional and you don't want to look silly in front of a client and try something different because you don't want to look like an idiot. Well, this happened to me about five years ago. I've been a professional for about eight or nine years now, and a couple of years into being a professional photographer, I nearly quit. I nearly quit because I wasn't excited anymore. All I was doing at that time was corporate headshots because at the time it was what was making me money. But even if it's not your full-time job yet, doing personal work is incredibly important and it's important in order to gain new work doing <laughs> what you actually want to do. So going back when I was doing corporate headshots for a couple of years and getting bored of that, well, I realized that the only reason I was getting bored is because that was the only thing that was on my website because that's all I was creating at the time. No one was calling me up to do anything creative because I didn't prove my worth first. I hadn't gone out and done that. I had actually, that idea that's been sitting in my head waiting for someone to call me up and ask me to do it. No one's going to call me up and ask me to do this creative project. If you've got a creative project in your head now, you think, I've always wanted to try that concept using that light in this way. Don't wait for someone to call you up and ask you to do it. Just get a Saturday out in your diary and book it. For me, this has been the biggest turning point in my career is when I decided to create one personal project a month. One idea for me, no one else. I've been doing this for eight years and has now shaped me into the photographer that I am today, where I'm lucky that I can be in a position where most of my work, not all, but most of my work is born out of stuff that I want to do and it's my personal work. One of my first personal projects, I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I could get a blow up bed and put it in the middle of the lake and then see if I can have a model, maybe a young child on the bed in the middle of the lake. So it almost, the concept is almost she's waking up from a dream, but she's still asleep. Well, I did it. I didn't wait around for someone to ask me to do it. No one was ever gonna call me up to do that. So instead, I just did it. After this shoot, I was asking myself the same question about finding my style, what is my style? And I want you to try this. I want you to try, instead of thinking about style, I want you to think of story. So rather than thinking of what is my style, I want you instead to change the word style and change that to story. What is your story? What is something that you can tell, only you can tell? So many people have photographed the Grand Canyon and that's why I choose not to photograph the Grand Canyon. That's not what excites me. What excites me is creating a story that only I can tell and you should create stories that only you can tell. When you start creating your own concepts and build up enough concepts and do your own shoots, when you do enough of that, I guarantee your style will come through. It will come through in the stories that you tell. If you're constantly looking on social media, and I'm a victim of this as well, if you're constantly looking on social media all the time, looking left and right, what are they doing? What are, what's he doing? Looking at all the trends, you are never gonna develop your own style. Stop looking at other people's work and instead you should be comparing your, yourself to yourself. So what I want you to try and do, I want you to try and do this. I want you to go through your Instagram feed, for example. So rather than going through someone else's Instagram feed, go through your Instagram feed and go, I don't know, maybe go back maybe two or three years and look at the work, look at the body of work that you were producing back then. Are you improving? That, that is the work that you should be comparing yourself to. So don't compare yourself to other people. Compare yourself to yourself maybe two or three years ago and think what kind of things you were doing back then. Your goal at the end of each day is to feel creatively fulfilled. I wanna feel tired in a good way. And creative fulfillment for me is the key to success. It's the key to progression. If you're not progressing, 
you're not succeeding. If you're not trying something new, then you're not progressing. You're not going to do better. So that's why you need to do personal work, which gives you an excuse to try something new. If you are, as I say, a working photographer, and if it doesn't work, oh, at least you learned something. At least you won't do that in front of a paying client. But if it does work, then you've got something to throw at the back that you can pull out again in front of a paying client. One of my personal projects is I wanted to do a lighting tutorial and I was hesitant about doing it because I thought there's so many lighting tutorials on YouTube. What's going to make mine any different? And my friend and my friend Andy kind of said something that resonated with me and it still resonates with me today. And he said, because no one will explain it the way you can. And that was a light bulb moment for me. And that's when I realized that, yeah, there are thousands, maybe millions of uh, lighting tutorials online but no one will explain it the way I can, just like no one will be able to take that photo the way you can, set it up the way you can. You have a voice, you'll have your own way of setting it up and showing it, so show it, just do it. I promise you won't regret it. That first lighting tutorial has now hit over half a million views on my YouTube channel. It's one of my um, best videos that I've done so far and has been the foundation to doing more behind the scenes work on my YouTube channel all because it was born out of personal projects. The next question you might be asking yourself now is, okay, well, how do I go about thinking of my next idea? How do I think of the next story? How do I think of the, the, my next concept? And the easiest thing to try out first is to start from home. Start looking at your family members, start looking at maybe doing portrait sessions with um, your mum or dad or your grandparents if they are still around. This is something that I did. I was inspired by Philip Bloom. He did an interview with his dad. So I decided that I would do an interview with my nan. So for my personal projects that month, I decided to interview my nan. And I want to show you a little excerpt now. Now Mick was very supportive in the way that he used to take me. He was like my manager and drive me everywhere, all to the different places when I was singing, that I started going to singing in all the club then. I'd come away from the council and I was singing semi-professional, which I loved. And Nick was always there and he was always stand at the back of the stage if, if to, to judge the mic, how, how I would, if, if I was too near it, he would say, sort of go back. And if I wasn't near enough, he'd, he'd sort of come forward. He was brilliant, it was brilliant. And, um, and I don't sing anymore because he's not there to support me. He used to sort all my programmes out for me for what I was going to sing at the different clubs. And his favourite song he used to like me singing was You'll, You'll Never Walk Alone from uh, Carousel, the, the, uh, the film Carousel and the Show. And um, he he used to he used to say something when I come and say, I was very proud of you, which I'm very proud of him too. Sorry, I'm getting a bit choked. And I sort of, I wish, and that's my, my biggest regret now, that I, I never kept it up because by not singing, I used to sort of do all the songs, I used to know them all off by heart. You'll Never Walk Alone was one of them and Amazing Grace was another one, uh, My Way was another one. Um, and I couldn't do them now because as you get older, I think your vocal cords go as well. But um, I just wished I had kept, kept up the singing because I just sing now in the kitchen, which is a bit croaky and I can't reach the high notes anymore. But I've got my memories. I've, you know, I have got some, some lovely memories. What I'd say, I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. <laughs> so I've got good memories and I'm just thinking of them all the time. And my children keep reminding me of different things. I keep coming up with different things that they're shocked with. I couldn't tell you now, but I'll, um, yeah, I've, I've, I've had a, a very blessed life, yeah. How high can you go now? Oh, <laughs> and not very nice. But I did just have a nice voice, but not now. 
that people say, come on, why you can see I said, no, I can't. I have to see right low. I said, I'm down in my boots now. That's just an excerpt from that interview I did with my nan, which is, um, it's got to be one of the, my proudest pieces of work. Because of this interview, it was about half an hour long. Um, my nan will live forever in that video. I remember when I drove away, uh, my sister helped me film that. I remember when I drove away, I turned to Cassie and I said, we've, we've just filmed something amazing today. You've got to find what you're in love with. That's why I've said start with home. Find out what, be driven by instinct. I just felt like it was something I had to do. I think it's something we all have, have to do as photographers. Use your skill as a photographer f for good. I know that sounds kind of, use, use it for good. I know it's, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like if you've got a skill, then use it to do good in this world. Again, I know that sounds really cheesy, but it's true, you know. If you, can, if you can use it and create an archive, I, I know that was video and wasn't photos, I'm a filmmaker as well, but we also took some photos as well. But I just wanted to show you that piece because it was, uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite parts of the video when she's speaking about my granddad. Another example of one of my personal projects and when I got the idea, driven by instinct to go and do this idea was back in 2016, there was a show on the BBC called The Big Life Fix and episode one featured a guy called James Dunn, a photographer from Liverpool who suffers from a rare genetic skin condition called epidermolysis bullosa. Uh, the condition is terminal, but James was determined to make a difference. James is unable to take an image without the careful aid of his dad, but thanks to the BBC show and product design engineer Jude Pullen, they created a custom camera rig enabling James to not only move the camera, but zoom, focus, and change all of the manual settings all from a tablet. And without any hesitation, I contacted James and I asked if, uh, if I could be of assistance. I made the trip and drove up to see James and him and I spent the whole weekend together and it was one of the best weekends I've ever had. We filmed the whole weekend, so if you do want to check it out, again, I'll leave a link in the description below. But again, this was something driven by instinct. We had an amazing time. Um, I taught James loads about how to use this camera and how to get the most out of it in manual mode and also use some lighting as well. This is another excerpt from that documentary. This is right at the very end of filming. Now, years ago, I talk about the condition, how bad it was, how painful it was, how depressing it was, and how much it affects my life. Uh, negatively. Now, I'm putting a whole different slant on that. I've, I've, I've learned to focus on positive points of the condition, um, the the happiness I have in life. You know, EV isn't me. You know, it doesn't define who I am. It's it's a it's a small part of me, and you know that it's ten percent of me. The other ninety percent. It's a whole lot, it's a whole different aspect, you know. There's a lot more things to me apart from EV. And that's what I like to talk about. I like to talk about how, you know, during my hardest times through pain, through depression, the one thing that's kept me going is positivity and smiling and laughter. Um, a great family helps. Uh, always, but if you surround yourself by loving, happy people and you remember even if you're having a total rubbish day that you always smile, you're not only going to help yourself and make yourself feel better, but you're going to help the person you smile to. So even if you're walking down the street in London one day and you see someone that looks a bit, bit down, give them a smile. They might, they might not say, you know, oh that really cheered me up but you know in your heart that that's gonna have an impact on that person and they're most likely gonna remember that for the rest of their day. And it could help them. You know, they might have had a really bad time in work. Smile at them, make the day better and smile for yourself too. You, no matter how hard life is, you can't focus on it because it's just gonna, you're just gonna keep going down and down and down. You need to go up and up and up and smile and be positive.
James would have loved to have visited the photography show last year. In fact, we were going to give a talk and give almost a case study about this documentary. But unfortunately, James passed away shortly after making this documentary. Um, he did get to see a draft of the video though, and he said it was, Tommy, that was epic. <laughs> so this is something again, coming back to, it's gotta be something that's driven by instinct. It's gotta be something you're passionate about. Find something you're in love with. Start with your family and then go, go from there. Think story instead of style. And I think that that slight little shift in your thinking, I think will help a lot of people watching when it comes to thinking of a concept or their next personal project. And there is nothing more creatively fulfilling than this kind of work that I'm producing. No amount of money could be given to me that will top the creative fulfillment. That so I encourage you at home to create one personal project a month, one idea for you, no one else and let me know how you get on. Thanks ever so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. No, I enjoy life too and I enjoy uh, meeting my various members of my family uh, who are now uh, uh, distributed all around the place uh, because I've got a son and two daughters and nine grandchildren and 17 great grandchildren and I'm told the 18th one is due next April. Uh, and uh, I thoroughly enjoy life and, I, uh, and uh, we're now of course uh, uh, sort of making preliminary plans I believe for my hundredth if I, if I go that far. I hope I've always been a happy individual and uh, one has to look on the bright side all the time and you, you get problems on the road but you can overcome those problems. I've overcome many problems in my life and, and, and I'm sure everybody can if they, are. they work hard and uh, live a reasonable life and try not to upset anybody else. Uh, uh, as I say, I, I'm, I'm always looking to the, to the future. I'm still looking to the future now. And, uh, how much longer I've got, I don't know, but I've always, I've always done that. Look, look for tomorrow all the time. Don't look back, okay, things have gone wrong in the past, but that's done. You can't do anything about that, it's gone. <laughs>